it's been, you know, it's been, I don't know, all this rain and all this stuff. It's just been, I spent the morning with my, my beautiful wife and we just went for a walk and we did some stuff like that. And anyways, I had a, I had a good morning anyways, but as promised many, many different times, I'm finally going to go and do this. Uh, so this is the, the Northern Wild White on the site. And we're going to do that. And we're going to do it. We're going to do a deep dive in it. I don't think I've really done a real deep dive into this tea. Uh, but that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do a deep dive into this Northern Wild White Tea, which is a Camellia Formosensis White Tea from this spring. And it is in little pieces, unfortunately, because of a... <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story. Um, it's in a little bit more pieces than I would like teas to be, but you can see here, it's an absolutely beautiful tea. I'm trying something a little bit different. What I'm going to, what I've got over here going is the YouTube channel over here is going and, um, and I, it won't, I don't have, I don't have 1000 subscribers on the YouTube channel yet. So I'm just sort of, uh, what I'm doing right now is I am, uh, I'm just recording it and then I'll, I'll upload it and see. It's an experiment. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'll upload it. So I will uh, try and keep my language very good because if it goes up on YouTube, then it's around forever and ever and ever. Whereas with this stuff, it's easier because I, you know, it's, it's gone in 24 hours, right? So I should go, hey, hey, T Whisperer, how's it going? Uh, thank you very much for the shout out. Although I would, I would say that calling me a tea master is not something that I am particularly comfortable with. Um, I am I'm a person who loves tea, who loves sharing it, and loves talking about it. But tea master is way too strong a word for, for me and what I do. Um, but I, I appreciate it. Um, I do. And uh, there's a, a bunch of people that added in that that, that, that followed me. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Um, Miss, how's it going? I hope you're doing well. And uh, should I try it? Mo Motinho? <laughs> That's horrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I'm saying that the wrong way, so I apologize profusely. I. Uh, anyways, I, I won't try again. I won't try again, but <laughs> how's it going? <laughs> Tiku, oh, that's way better. That's way better, Hot. Yeah, that's that's way better. That's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> no, no, not Tiguru. <laughs> Random guy who talks about tea to his cell phone in his warehouse on the east coast of Taiwan. Accurate. <laughs> that would be that would be a much more accurate description of of who I am and what I do. Uh, I also sell it. I also sell the tea. So what I'm also going to do as I'm doing the deep dive in here is there's this tea. Now this tea is a certified organic Jinshren Oolong that I got on one of the sourcing trips and I just found this package. So I just saw this package. Uh, you're a tea adventurer. I like it. Although I think there's like 25 other people with the same name on Instagram. <laughs> I think there is. <laughs> and tea hunter, tea hunter, there's like 25 of them as well. Um, but yeah, I, 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 that's, that's better. Tea, tea adventurer. Uh, tea, tea guide, tea guide, maybe, maybe, I mean, that's, that's sort of my, my background. It's very strange to say, but that is sort of my background. Uh, so what I'm going to do with this organic, eh, sorry guys, sorry. There we go. What I'm going to do with this organic, uh, Jinshren is I'm just going to bowl brew it and I'm really going to get a deep dive into what this tastes like. Um, and this is, I'll talk about this farm as well. And yeah, so there we go. Why don't tea disciple? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can do tea disciple. <laughs> Although I, I would say I've got like uh, uh, many, many, many masters. Tea student would be better. Tea student. Um, absolutely, I, I call myself a tea student. Um, and uh, a very biased tea student. A, a Taiwanese tea chauvinist <laughs> would be what I would be. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that would be that would be a more accurate description. Um, 
But uh, anyways, <laughs> thank you for the shout out for all of that. Anyways, here we go. Let's talk about this tea. Now, what I actually did was I brought this, I brought this bowl just to show you guys sort of what's going on. Now, this bowl is actually clean. It's just one of those plastic bowls. Um, but can you see what's happening with this tea? It's, it's, <laughs> it's such a pain because it's a beautiful tea, right? It's, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous tea. Um, and if I pick through it, then I can pick out the full leaves like this. But a lot of it is broken up leaves. And you can see it's broken up leaves. So, uh, so the story is with this tea, done by monks just outside of Taipei in Pingling. And it is, they have to fit 75 grams of tea into this small bag. So when I pack this tea up and I send it to people, I put 25 grams of tea into this small bag. And so I think because they're, again, they're not business people, they're monks and nuns. What they did was they, they just like, well, we got to fit it in this bag. We need 75 grams in this bag. So just crunch it up a bit, throw it in. <laughs> so that's what, that's what this is. So when people buy this, I have to, I have to go like this, you know, put on the gloves and go <laughs> and sort of take out the, uh, the unbroken leaves. Um, but, uh, but what's the story of this tea? This tea is a Camellia Formosensis tea. It is forest grown. There's a video on it. So when I say it's forest grown, uh, look on the feed, uh, and it should be, I don't think I've, I've launched on YouTube yet, but I will eventually launch it onto YouTube. So put that video up. Um, but it's a mix between two different areas that are, one is like really forest grown, like seeds dunked into the mud, uh, surrounded by a forest and just grown for 20 years. And then the other, the other one is teas that were, were planted. They buzz back around the tea bushes. They're well spaced. They buzz back around the tea bushes, but it's basically surrounded by trees in the middle of the forest. All right. So that's the two, the two different, um, the two different, uh, places and spots. And then this one over here is from Elan. This is a lower elevation tea place. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a four or five minute steep on this. So that would take it to uh, 12 minutes, just so I'd say it to myself. And then I'm gonna do uh, this Kung Fu style. So I'm gonna do the first steep is gonna be 30 seconds on this one. And putting hot water on this tea, it just, what comes out first, poof, is the taste of white or the smell of white, um, uh, white Camellia formosensis, which is dry leaf litter and super, super sweet honey sweetness. I mean, that is this, this tea from this, this particular plant, especially when it's forest grown. Beautiful, beautiful uh, tea. And here we go. There's the first 30 seconds. So let's pour it out. Now, when I'm doing all of this stuff, right, uh, I've said it a hundred times, I'll say it again. If you get this tea and you really want to enjoy this tea, you should be using a gaiwan, you should be using a pot. What I'm doing right here is full-on evaluation, easy, like just doing it in a way that is uh, consistent and easy for me for evaluation, right? I'm not really doing this for enjoyment, although, you know, I mean, <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy drinking this tea. I love drinking this tea. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, but basically the way I'm doing it right now is, you know, if you're doing this at home, you probably should do it in a, in a little bit more stylistic way. Uh, love those monks. Well, yes, they are, they are, they are very monkish. Um, and I'm actually quite happy with, uh, developing this relationship with them. I'm really enjoying the relationship that I'm getting with the monks and nuns, um, up there because it's, it's, uh, their tea is really, really, really inaccessible it's not an accessible tea this tea the tea that they make there it's in small batches it's packaged their retail prices are insanely expensive and they don't have that real market force push on them right they don't have that that real sort of push into them the market and so for me developing my relationship with them I can take their teas, buy their teas, sell their teas they can make money I can make money people can get beautiful clean teas but it's a learning process. <laughs> it's definitely a learning process for them and for me as well. Uh, but I'm really, really, really enjoying it. So why don't we stick a nose in here and see what we can pull out from the first little sniff of this. 
Um, super sweet, honey, 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 sweetness. And uh, I guess I'll just stop saying it, dry leaf litter. I'll say <laughs> the smell. <laughs> um, but the, the honey in this is not like uh, what you would get like a, like a, like a, Okay, so, so my, my prejudice in this, and I'll tell you my prejudice in this. My prejudice in this is that this tea, right? So this tea is, uh, it smells like honey, but, but I, used to, I used to raise bees, right? So, so when I say it smells like honey, it smells like wild, raw honey from a, a, a box that's in the forest, right? So that's, that's when I say honey, that's what, I'm, that's what I mean when I'm saying honey. And so this, this has got that, really complex honey right now so at this point in the game most people have tried the uh the new zealand honey from the new zealand flower Man manuka i'm sure i'm pronouncing that wrong but the manuka honey as well like people know what that that smell is that complex honey and people also know what you know the bears right those bears that you get for five bucks in a grocery store in western countries that are um usually from china they are so the way they do it is they actually feed the, the honey, they feed sugar water to the bees, the bees put it in their nests, uh, in, and they put it in the honey cones, and then they just feed them, feed them, feed them, and then so they get this huge production, you get a little touch of, oh yeah, that's honey, because it like went through their bodies and out again, but it's just sugar water. And that's the stuff that you get from the cheap stuff. I don't know if anybody has had like the real organic honeys, that, I mean, they are just complex. That's the smell I'm getting from this, right? So I'm getting forest honey. Now, I don't know if people know this. Again, this is my sort of my thing uh, because I, I used to raise bees uh, and and I'm a hipster, right? I mean, my all, all my arm hair is covering up my sleeve tattoos, of course. Uh, but uh, but I, I uh, you know, I it's hard for me to buy honey, right? I, I have to get it from you know, my honey master, the guy who taught me how to raise bees and things like that. Anyways, enough of, enough of my, my um, elitist honey talk. Uh, let's get to the teas. So first off the bat, you can see the huge difference in color between these teas, right? So this one is uh, super light. This is 30 seconds. This was five minutes, right? So this is, it's a darker, darker tea. Now, I think last time we did a big thing on what is white tea. What makes white tea? Why is white tea, white tea, things like this? Now I have, and I've got it right here. It was sitting here, it's in a bag. Uh, <laughs> maybe I put it somewhere else. Uh, should be, oh, it's, it's on the floor. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so this, this was the, the white tea that I talked about before. So this was given to me as a present by, by the nun who made it up there. And so this is a, a much more uh, sort of very traditional style of white tea, right? It's picked, it's laid beautifully on the racks, and it's dried. And this is sort of much more of a typical sort of white tea. What we've got here is much more of an easier to make white tea. And you can see straight off the bat with this tea that it's a darker color. And some of them are light, some of them are dark but it's been manipulated a little bit to bring out a more of a consistent-ness uh, uh, to it, right? It's, there's more consistency to this tea. It's less gambling, right? To use that word that might get us kicked out of Instagram. <laughs> um, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it is much more of a con consistency, right? So, and again, I mean, I think I told this story before, I'll tell that briefly. Uh, there you can see there's the bug bites. Uh, yeah, you can see the holes in there. There's the holes in there. Um, so you can see the bug bites on it. But I went and I went and I saw the bag and I sort of shook it a bit. I'm like, I'm buying this tea. Is it the same as this? And in the bag, they got this big bag and it, and it's, it it's looks like full leaves. And they're like, yeah, it's the same. I'm like, is this going to be all broken? They're like, some are broken, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Next time, I'm just going to take it out of the bag. Um, but I will, I'll go up and I'll be able to talk to them. And again, it's, it's the process of, of dealing with, uh, with monks and nuns. So why don't we get to tasting the teas? So why don't we get to tasting the teas? Um, love the bugs. Well, that's, that's it, right? And, and some of them actually, when I'm doing this, 
this is another thing. When I first started out, I had this beautiful white tee and and I sent it out uh, to a bunch of people. And somebody got back to me and they said, what's all this white stuff on the white tee? And and I, I didn't really pay attention when I was sending out all these samples. And, and I, I got the tea and I was like, oh yeah, there's white stuff. And then I phoned up the uh, the producer. I'm like, what's this white stuff? And I sent the picture. And, uh, and the answer was cobwebs. <laughs> and so with the white teas, because you lay them out and dry them, sometimes you get little bits of white. And it's like a white sort of fibrous thing. You look at it closely, you know it's not mold, right? You know it's not like a fungus. Because you look at it, you're like, what is that? But it's, it's, actually, um, it's actually the spider webs. Uh, and so, so when I'm doing this, this tea as well, sometimes when I'm going through it, I actually go like, ah, I got to take that out. And I take out little bits of uh, the spider webs. But anyways, that's a really good tell to see whether your tea is agrochemical free, not sprayed. Out of all the bugs out there, the... The spiders hate the, uh, the chemicals the most, right? Out of all the other bugs. Uh, maybe the green leaf hopper. Anyways, whatever. Spiders, spiders are very, very good tell. If you're walking through a tea garden and you see spider webs over everything, you know it's a, tea, it's a clean tea garden at least for the last six months. Okay, let's get into it. So here we go. So this is a Camellia formosensis tea. And Camellia formosensis, again, uh, extra flavoring, yes, protein. <laughs> it's the protein, <laughs> I believe is the, the stereotype there. So this is the first steep, and what you're getting with this and what you don't have, this has it, this one doesn't. So straight off the bat, because it's been manipulated a little bit, I was talking about this one before, remember, you can really taste the room. So, the, oh, the aftertaste is so, again, hipster honey, so beautiful. And this, when you're drinking this tea, you really are tasting the room, right? You're really tasting the room. And there is that, um, I guess, stuffiness, for lack of a better word. Because it's dried in the same room, you can taste the bamboo racks, you can taste the place. With this, not really. Right? It's been manipulated a little bit more, it's not taken as long to create, and so you do get uh, you do get sort of just the taste of the tea. So that was the first steep, and what I'm getting out of the first steep more than uh, anything else is the sweetness. Now, remember, this is a white tea, so it's quite light, right? Iran Tea Master's Cup, how's it going? Hope you're having an absolutely wonderful day. And and so what you're getting out of it straight off the bat is a real sort of honeyness. And you're also getting sort of dry leaves. Now, dry leaves, okay, we're going to nerd out on dry leaves, okay? Uh, so dry leaves, there's a bunch of different kinds. There's wet leaves that have been dried, there's, there's dry leaf litter. Like I grew up in, I grew up in Canada, I grew up in Toronto. And so for me, there is a very visceral and uh, multi-layered leaf taste, smell, taste point, right? So, so when uh, in September in Toronto, the leaves would start to change color. And then, you know, October, mid-October, early October, they start to fall when they first fell you would you'd be able to kick these leaves around. They were dry. The, it was a sweet smell. And then, you know, by mid to late October, by the time Halloween rolled around and you were walking out, you know, going from house to house, threatening people for candy, like that's another story. I try to explain to my children what, <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what Halloween is. And it's like trick or treat, right? So what's treat? Okay, well, that's the candy. What's trick? You're threatening them. <laughs> you're you're threatening them, right? You, uh, I mean, we used to throw eggs at people's houses. <laughs> you know, my kids are like, so you would walk up to someone's house, a stranger, and you would threaten them for candy. Well, basically, yes. Basically, that is what Halloween is, right? And, and you dress up like a ghost. What? <laughs> you dress up like a ghost and you threaten, and they just give you candy? Oh, yeah, and everybody does it, right? Everybody does it. Everybody 
walks around the neighborhood, you go to strangers' houses and they give you candy after you threaten them dressed up like a ghost, <laughs> you know, and they're like, best holiday ever. And it really was, anyways. Um, but when you would do that, when you go by October, right, by October, the, the leaves had settled, it rained a lot, a cold, clean, crisp fall rain, and she'd get a lot of rain, and then there'd be that other smell, right, which, again, is quite pleasant. But it is not the early October smell of the dry leaves, it's the late October smell of the leaves. And there's a rot that is set in, so there's a rot. So it's not just, oh, somebody bought some tea, thank you very much, thank you. Um, and then there would be, you know, like, so you'd have that same sweetness, but mixed in with some of the rot. So the rot would be like the show poor leaf litter smell, right? So you've got that sweetness, but you've also got the rot. Now that I've described to you some of the smells that hit that part of my brain of childhood, uh, this one here is the first, right? So when you're talking about this leaf litter smell, you're talking about early October, uh, the type of leaves that you can kick and they go and then settle down, right? That's the smell. Dry, clean, uh, golden leaves, I guess is how you would describe um, the leaf that are taste of this. So here we go. Here's the second steep on this. Actually, here. Science. <laughs> so this one, after five minutes, whoa, 600. Wow. That's, this is the, the biggest TDS that I've, I've come across. This one is five and a half, 550, wow. Um, that's interesting, why this would be pumping up. The, the leaves are a little bit more broken, but still, it's interesting. Usually with the other teas, the oolongs is about 300 or 400. Mm. This second steep is gorgeous. It is gorgeous, it's golden, right? Super sweet, you got that honey, that complex honey sweetness to it. The dry leaf leader is way in the background. It's just sort of complex honey sweetness. That's what you're getting from the second steep of this tea. And it really is, um, you know, like good Taiwanese white teas are gonna have this. But the oolong teas tend to have it more isolated, um, lighter. With the Camellia Former Senses stuff, I don't know if anybody's tried the, the tea cakes, the Camellia former senses tea cakes are much, much more earthier and leafier than the sort of the oolong uh, cultivar ones. And if I was to hazard a guess, I would say uh, mostly because the, the oolong teas are usually in like plantation styles. Now you can see how fast I'm drinking this tea, right? And it's, I'm drinking this tea so fast because it's so pleasant. It's a pleasant experience from top to bottom. A little bit maybe in the back end, maybe a coating of the tongue. I wouldn't even call it an edge. Maybe just a thickness, maybe a slight, slight, slight astringency would be the only thing that would be uh, not 100% sort of positive in there. Um, but it's certainly not a, a bad point to the tea. It's just, it's just there, it's tea. But overall, you're just getting a thick mouthfeel, much, much thicker than the oolong style white teas. The oolong style white teas, it's a lot more. Oh, hey, there's a good example. So yesterday I was doing this, excuse me. Yesterday I was doing this tea, right? So this was the, the Ruby 18 white. And this also has a leaf litter, but it's been a little bit more, more rotted, I guess, less fresh, uh, but not in a bad way, right? But this one is just so light so light so flowing so so fresh um anyways here we go let's try the let's try the five minute one let's see if it lasted five minutes with boiling water all right here we go let's try it out wow so maybe way in the back end i'm getting a touch of astringency a touch but not very much there's a floralness to this tea that i was not expecting much stronger, thicker mouthfeel, floralness going on. This one's about a minute, so we'll do this one. So that makes me think this is going to be some, some floralness coming out in this as well. Uh, uh, hi, if you send me your address directly, I will send you Iranian tea for testing. I, 
Sure, I'd love to try some Iranian tea. Um, I don't know much about Iranian tea. Uh, what What is, oh, here's a question for you. So Iran, Iran Masters Cup. What would be the Iranian taste profile that would be like the Iranian t taste profile? Give you an example. Uh, for Taiwan, you're looking at sort of maybe the higher altitude, even the lower stuff, you're looking at thick mouthfeel, butteriness. Uh, usually uh, a floral taste is in a lot of the teas, so a floral taste is in a lot of the teas, uh, but a softness, right? Not as strong as the Chinese teas. The Chinese teas are oftentimes really strong. They got strong flavors, you know, like straws and, and uh, like really like shen poor, like bra, whereas the Taiwanese teas are softer, rounder. Generally speaking, again, generally speaking, um, but for for Iran, what would be the what would be the typical taste, right? So you've got the say like the Indian strong uh, Assamica style, uh, strong strong bitterness, strong flavor, strong malt, right? That are in the Assamica teas. I'm just curious because uh, I don't know I know basically nothing about Iranian tea at all. So here we go. Let's go into the third steep. Now, look, look at that. That's interesting, eh? Maybe this one's a little bit less, but look, the third steep on this is darker than the five-minute steep on this. Um, so let's, let's try the third steep. Let's see if that there's a beautiful floral that came out in this, comes out in this one. Wow. So it's slow. It's super, super slow. Mmm. That's, that's so interesting. So with the white teas, generally speaking, if they're high quality, white teas, you can brew them for a very, 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 very long time. So if you're looking at the different tea styles, uh, maybe like the really good shens and shows, you can brew the most. Uh, then you've got uh, for, for Taiwan, uh, the oolong teas can last six or seven steeps. If they're a good one, sometimes many, many more if they're really good. The black teas, you're usually looking at three to four steeps, something like that. The GABA teas, again, the, sort of the three, three to four steeps. Uh, the, uh, but the white teas, if you get a good one, they actually last the longest out of all of them. You can just keep brewing them and keep brewing them and keep brewing them. And I think that's mostly due to the fact that uh, they release their, the leaves are, are so it's tough to get in there and, and release all the, the stuff. All the other teas are much more manipulated. Black tea, for example, it's much more manipulated. Everything's broken up. The first couple steeps, you're just getting that blast of taste, right? Whereas the white teas, it, it, it can last a lot longer. Um, so what I'm looking at right here with these two teas, the first three steeps of this haven't even gotten to a lot of the taste profile, the five minute steep on this, which I think is really interesting because usually by the third steep, especially with the oolongs, the black teas, things like that, everything's opened up. But this hasn't yet, which is which is really interesting. It's also uh, lighter compared to this, although obviously you're still getting a lot of the flavor. That's amazing. So here, the honeyness is like in the back end. Up front is just this really gorgeous red flower floral. I wouldn't go far to say as a rose. You could touch on rose. You could touch on rose. But it's not like a rose rose, but like a red flower sort of a thing. Uh, the base of Iranian tea is something like a combination of Indian and Chinese. Because this tea is not made of chemical fertilizers, chemicals, and all kinds of poisons, it is completely organic. That's right up my alley. Right up my alley. That's wonderful. That makes me happy um, to be able to try teas like that because that's important for a tea hipster such as myself. Um, these teas here, all of these teas are certified organic. They're all done by hand, uh, blah, 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 blah. Actually, no, no, I lied. Uh, this tea right here, I'm gonna get to it right now, actually. This tea right here is a Jinshren and this one has been sitting for 30 minutes in warm water. Um, and this tea was machine picked. It's a lower elevation, uh, lower quality, but certified organic ginger. Uh, what type of tea does Iran produce the most? Is it black tea? Great question. Um, and I hesitate to ask this question. I don't want to be, 
um, offensive in any way. I know that, especially in that area of the world, there's a lot of different, a lot of different, <laughs> I'm just going to ask the question, please, please. <laughs> Is it similar to the way that Turkish people drink tea? I sort of know about the Turkish style of tea. By no means am I saying that Iran is the same as Turkey and anything like that. I know it's all very complicated. I've traveled around that area of the world. I don't, I don't know. I'm just asking the question. <laughs> what is it? Um, do you guys drink tea in, in a similar way to uh, to Turkey, which would be very very strong tea with a lot of sugar? That's 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 it. I don't. <laughs> uh, Seventy percent of black tea uh, becomes white. Uh, the rest of white tea and green tea and oolong tea are also obtained from Iranian tea. Well, that's, um, and, I, and I know, I know because of geopolitical stuff, it must be tough to export a lot of that tea. It must be tough to export it. But in Iranian oolong, that would be really interesting, right? Because there's the, uh, all the Indian teas that are, that are, you know, sort of oolongs and sort of blacks. And anyways, it'd be very interesting. It'd be, I'd love to, uh, to sample some and all of that. Oh, right, so here we go. This is very, very different than these teas. This is not forest grown. This is a machine picked. It's certified organic, uh, but it's from a garden that I bought. There's one tea that's offered for the uh, wholesale side of things, but I didn't actually buy any of the other teas from this. The reason I'm sampling this is because I had it in a bag and I was like, oh yeah, I haven't tried this yet. So I thought I'd try it here. So this is a Jin Tren. And wow, isn't that amazing? I can really taste the terroir. So this is this is from Ila. And um, you tried the Wu Yi Oolong. That's not an organic tea. It's a conventional, it's a clean of conventional tea that I have on the site. But this is, um, it's got that same-ness to it. For 30 minutes sitting in here, it's been, it's really, really good. Hmm. No bitterness or astringency at all in this tea. But also not something that's jumping out at me saying, holy crap, that's an amazing tea. See, that's the problem, guys. I mean, that's the thing that, that I've talked about before and I will talk about uh, forever. Just because something is certified organic doesn't mean a gosh darn thing. Um, the aftertaste on this is nice and fruity. Um, but looking at these two teas, like looking at these two teas, uh, they're, they're all certified organic, right? They're, they're all agrochemical free. But, um, and as these teas go, this is actually pretty good. I mean, they're not in the same class. They're not anywhere near the same class. Forest grown community form of census, complex honeys, leaf litter, all these different types of things. A nice, decent oolong uh, that's not particularly special, good or, or particularly special bad. A tea that you could place it side by side with a bunch of different teas. You could put them all side by side and the differences would be a little bit different for each of the teas, right? Um, but it wouldn't win any competitions. Overall, it's a it's quite a solid tea. Uh, I can't remember what the price was, but uh, I don't think it would be a tea that I'd bring on the site. Certainly not bad though. It's just a lower elevation, just a lower elevation tea. So here we go. This is the fourth steep on this. Forest grown Camellia formosensis white tea that has come in uh, a package of a little bit too many broken leaves for my liking. Um, but uh, this one I'm going to leave for another two minutes, get another real blast on it. Wow! So, so that's what I was saying before, right? With the white teas. Because the white teas, when they're processed, they're not really broken down, right? So with the black teas the most, they're like, they're like broken down, right? Everything is broken down. And, and with this, with this tea, it wasn't, right? It was laid, picked, 
uh, probably laid for about a day or two and then put through the dryer and it's done. And so <clears throat> this tea and has, has they manipulate it a little bit to get some of that honey sweetness in there and, and make a consistency. And so look at the, can you see the darkness of this tea now? I mean, this is how, how this is as dark as a black tea right now. This is literally as dark as a black tea right now. And it's as dark as a black tea as the fourth steep. Uh, I did what, 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute, a minute, give or take. Uh, that second one, maybe I didn't time it out exactly right, but a minute, a minute. And um, the color of this tea is so dark. <laughs> like it's so dark and why that is. The first couple steeps, it's starting to open up, starting to open up, the hot water's breaking down the cell structures and everything. And then as you go further on and further on, further on, you're getting just more stuff coming out. Science. Here we go, you ready? Now, interestingly, this was 500 and change, total dissolved solids. Now, it's only 300 and change. So the actual total dissolved solids in there is less, but the color's more. Science. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what it means, but... Um, <laughs> but uh, but that's, that's the way it is. <clears throat> So this one went through a, wow, that's thick. That is very, very thick. So this went through a five minute steep and then however many minutes that was, maybe three, three, four minutes. I didn't actually time that one. But uh, it's hard to see, but this one is actually a little bit darker than this one right now, slightly darker. Okay, let's get into these teas and Drink them up. Now, again, why am I drinking these teas right now? <clears throat> because I had promised to drink these teas on the live, but more importantly, I haven't really done a deep, deep, deep dive. This is one of the newer teas on the site, and I haven't really done a super deep dive into the tea. I've only had it uh, maybe three or four times, and uh, oftentimes it's just sort of in the, the competition style. Uh, and actually this one, this one I didn't even really sample it. I'd sampled the, the last year's version, but I didn't sample this year's version but they had some left over in a thing. And I just was like, Shh, this is the white tea? And they're like, yeah, this year's? Yeah, okay, I'm buying it. <laughs> because it was so sweet in the cup. Like it was just, just honey sweetness, just beautiful. And so, so that, was, that was it. I just did it, uh, did it that way. There's the floral, right? So first couple of steeps were just like honey, First steep was leaf litter. Second, third steeps were honey, complex, deep, good honey. And now it's getting into the sweet floral, sort of red flower taste. That's fun. That's fun. I mean, there's not a lot of teas out there that, <clears throat> that change that much, and especially change that much in a fun way, right? I mean, there's some teas where the first steep is awesome, the second steep is not so good, and then and then the third steep is like really bad. <laughs> you know, like there's, there's things like that that happen all the time. But this one is like the first one, you know, it's bringing back memories of uh, of childhood and, and Halloween. You know, the second steep is like full on honey, like really good flower honey. Uh, not, not quite as thick as the Manuka, I'm not pronouncing that, but the New Zealand famous honey. Um, and then, you know, the third steep, you're getting a touch of that floral coming in. And then the fourth steep, you're like, whoa, floral. Uh, that's fun. Wow, okay, so here we go. This is the second long steep on this one. Hmm, this tea has legs. So this tea, again, like I was saying before, the white teas, the good ones, you can brew these teas a long time. So you can brew these teas a really, really, really long time. Now, uh, just to go back to sort of the cultivar thing, we'll do another one minute on this guy. Um, <clears throat> and then whenever I remember for this guy. Um, like yesterday, I, I was sampling this tea, which is the, the Ruby 18 white tea, right? So the cultivars really are important, right? So when I'm drinking this one, like, 
at the end of that session, I was full and I was a little bit jittery and I like, it's a strong cultivar. That tea is a strong, strong cultivar. But I'm drinking a ton of this tea right now. Like, you know, I'm gonna be racehorsing it at the end of this live session, you know, like drinking a lot of it. It's a beautiful tea. But I'm not even feeling full. It's a light tea, right? It's a light tea. I'm not even really feeling all that full. Um, it's, uh, it's about a minute. So we'll go back into it. So you can see it's still really, really, really dark in there. Here we go, let's try it out. Now it's 250, right? So it's darkening up, but the total dissolved solids in there are less. I mean, someday I'll talk to somebody who'll be able to really explain to me why that is or how that works and all that stuff. Right now, why I'm doing this, right? I joke about it, right? It's, you know, like whatever, my, my little phallic thing that I put into my tea. Um, but this is doing the total dissolved solids, right? And why I'm doing is I'm just sort of building up knowledge. I'm trying hard to understand what's going on with the tea. Right? Because, because even if I don't know exactly what that means or why that means that or, or all those different types of things, for me, it's really, 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 uh, it's building all these puzzle pieces, right? It's building all these puzzle pieces. Like there's somebody who did this experiment the other day. Or no, I guess it was a couple months ago now, which was awesome, right? They had taken, they'd weighed their tea, they'd gone through their session. Then they took out their tea, they placed it, they left it for like two days in the sun to dry out and then they weighed it again. And it was, uh, I think they lost like 50% of the weight of the tea, the tea leaves, right? That was fascinating. That for me was like, wow, that's awesome. Um, again, what does that say? I, I don't really know, but I'm gathering all of that information so that I can use it in the future. Okay, so there's less going on. So with this, this is the, I think the fourth or the fifth, probably the fifth steep. Now what's left is the, it's going back to the sweetness, the honey sweetness. So it went dry leaf litter, honey, honey floral, floral, and now it's going back to the, the sweetness on the back end of it. Which is interesting. Let's go back to this one here. Way more in there. Way more going in there. So here we go. Here's the third steep with big long steeps on this. Super floral, honey aftertaste. Nice. Nice. So before I go back to these teas, we'll do a, a palate cleanse on this oolong. Again, this is from Elan. Uh, it's not that far away. It's about an hour's drive away, although you go through what's called the Snow Mountain Tunnel, which is a to, uh, I think it's a 19 kilometer tunnel that goes underneath 3,000 meter mountains. It's uh, every time I'm in that tunnel, I sort of halfway through I go like, holy crap! <laughs> you know, it's it's amazing engineering, absolutely amazing. This is a decent oolong. It really is. It's nice, but. The defining characteristic of this tea is the fact that it's certified organic. That's, that's just the defining characteristic. It's an all around good, very, very, very low bitterness and astringency. It's got a really nice sort of uh, fruity floral aftertaste. It's a low elevation gin trim. So the the sweet spot for Jintren teas, for the really the, the milky, the nai, naio, like the, the buttery mouthfeel, is between 600 and 900 meters, uh, and up to 1,000, let's say up to 1,000. And this is a lower elevation, so this is only, it's basically sea level, it's about 300 meters above sea level. And so you're not really getting that, that buttery mouthfeel, that thick buttery mouthfeel, but you are getting like a, because um, it's done well, it's done really well. You're getting uh, upfront vegetal, um, nice, nice mouthfeel, but not particularly thick, smooth. 
And then the back end is, is a great aftertaste. Like just that, that when you have agrochemical low intervention teas, that aftertaste is just like, mm, it's great. But I, I feel kind of bad. I, I think I chased away the Iranian Masters Cup fellow. Um, when I, is he, I don't know. The, do Iranian people drink tea the same way that Turkish people drink tea? Does anybody know? <laughs> Um, I don't know, is it, is it like really strong with a lot of sugar? Um, I think it's an honest, I, I just, I'm just curious. But <laughs> I would love to try some Iranian tea. I would love to try some Iranian tea. Uh, who knows? Perhaps we can get in touch and get some. I'd love to do some. If you can send mail from Iran to Taiwan right now. I'm telling you, it's, it's, my mood has been a little tough the last, uh, last couple of days. It's been catching up with me just because, you know, the world's opening up, which is wonderful, you know, as long as people stay healthy and all of that, hopefully things are getting better. But I still cannot send tea to many countries of the world, which drives me a little batty because I would love to send tea to a lot of areas of the world. Um... But overall, it's been absolutely wonderful. Uh, there was one person who was not very nice, <laughs> but the rest of the people, you know, have been absolutely wonderful uh, about the delay. Um, and uh, so I can't wait to send out that tea to everybody. I mean, it's amazing, the tea people. It's amazing. Tea people are amazing people, which uh, makes me so glad that I chose this, this particular incarnation of of my lifestyle so see these guys a sniff so what i will say uh we're all in the same boat but again i don't want to sound like my boat's bad my boat is awesome <laughs> like it's it's awesome <laughs> it's way the vast majority of the world is way worse off than me um and i don't want to claim that <laughs> It's just swearing on me. It's swearing on everybody. Right? So, and the best thing to do is do the normal stuff. Right? Do the normal stuff. Do the routines. Um, but when I'm sniffing these right now, what's really interesting, this one has got way more sniff. This one, it's, uh, and then, you know, obviously, when you're doing the deep dive into the teas like this and comparing them side by side, this has had boiling water poured on it a bunch of times. This one, has had boiling water poured on it three times, right? This has been five, five, six times. And so this has gone, like it, more of it's been taken out, whereas less of this has, which, which is, again, it makes sense, but it's, it's fascinating and so much fun to play around with. Mm. And you can taste it, right? You can taste it, this has got, um, more stuff going on this one has got less stuff going on now obviously variations on theme but uh but this one's definitely got more uh more of the sweetness this has got still got some of the floral in there as well so right now i would definitely say that this is more pleasant to drink But it's not like it's bad. It's just one minute, one minute, right? This is a lot more tea. You can make a lot more tea with this one than with this one. So anyways, questions about this stuff, right? So we got these three teas. So we've got the, uh, let's see if I can pull out a leaf to show you. Yes. Here we go. You ready? See this leaf? This leaf tells you everything you need to know about this pick. So straight lines on the top, it's machine cut. There's also some, uh, some bug bites here, so you know that it's low intervention, right? So you've got the straight cut here and low intervention. Uh, just so you know I, why I'm going like this and back and forth, I'm, I'm also running like, a, I'm trying a YouTube video. So I can't do YouTube Live, so they don't have a thousand people subscribed for YouTube yet, but I'm gonna tape it and then throw it up on YouTube and see how that works. Um, but, uh, but here you can see the, the cut there so this is machine picked right so this is a machine picked 
uh, tea. Really easy to tell once you take a look at the leaves. Now, it's not a firm and fast rule, right? Because if I go in here and take a random one of these leaves, uh, actually, that's not a good example. But uh, <laughs> like I was saying before, this was a little bit broken up. So you're getting pieces of leaves like this, which is, which is a pain. <laughs> But, uh, but I, t I told that story a couple different times. Anyway, so you've got a leaf that kind of looks similar, right? But this leaf was handpicked, for sure, this leaf was hand. These, these gardens, where these are from, you cannot machine pick them, unless you've got like a mechanical arm that goes up like this and goes choop, 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 and then picks them up and brings them down. Like, these have to be, uh, these have to be handpicked. Um, but you can see here, so it's not a firm and fast rule, right? This is hand-picked, it's a white tea, but the leaves are a little bit broken up. Uh, so it's not a firm and fast, you wouldn't say, uh, like this tea is obviously hand-picked, this tea is machine-picked. But it just, you know, comes with the territory of learning all of this stuff and going into this stuff and doing a deep dive into this stuff. But, uh, but yeah, come on, any other questions with this stuff? I think I've uh, done my deep dive into these beautiful white teas and I've sort of figured out the nature of them and I've become much, much more confident in selling these two white teas. Or these two, this white tea. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and I mean, I knew it was a beautiful tea. I knew it was a rare tea and a gorgeous tea and, and on and on and on. But after doing this deep dive into this tea, it's... I'm gonna to have to add uh, sort of red, red leaf, or red flower floral to the uh, to the description on the site. Hmm. Big in this one. Ah, it's nice, smooth, flowing, uh, no resistance to the swallow. I wouldn't say this has a particularly unique cha chi to go off on the, the woo end of things. I'm not, I wouldn't say this is like um, giving me a strong feeling of anything other than, uh, uh, should I say it? Okay, I'll say it. Um, opening up the channels. <laughs> There's somebody who told me that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I very, very rarely use uh, use that term, um, but it's like a it's like it's a full on woo woo sort of opening up the channels type of thing. But it but it's like uh, the way way you, I would describe that in a non woo woo way is uh, uh, relaxing and sort of opening up the smoothness of the tea, uh, getting rid of the catches, right? Uh, relaxing but giving you energy at the same time, right? Uh, would you say it's sweeter than the Mountain White or the same? So, the Mountain White, uh, there's two of those. Uh, there is the purple and the white. The big difference between the Mountain White and this white would be uh, the age of the trees and the altitude. So the altitude of those are about uh, maybe 1,000 meters to 1,300 meters above sea level. They're in that beautiful sweet spot down there, but down there, it's much, much hotter. These are in the north of Taiwan. These are about 500 meters above sea level. Um, and so, but I, these are not as strong, let's put it that way. So these are not as strong. So a uh, way to describe that would be the sweetness of those teas is a lot more in the back end and a lot more lingering, right? You drink those teas and you are, up front, you're getting really strong flavors. The mid mouth is a little bit bigger. The back end, as it goes back, right, you're getting that much, much more lingering, because that that comes from the trees having a, a bigger root system. These trees are between 20 and 30 years old, so they're not as old, but they're treated really, really well, and they're in a beautiful, beautiful area. So I would say those other ones, the difference would be would be stronger, but they're very, very similar, very, very similar. But those ones, and also because they're pressed in the cake, um, which takes away a little bit of the bitterness and astringency to them uh, and, and sort of makes them last longer. But, but I would say, yeah, strength, strength. They're not quite as strong, but they're very, very similar. The, you can definitely taste the cultivar in there. Absolutely. 
what is your criterion for adding something that you've tried to the site? Uh, uh, Mr. Gibson, um, I would say that the criteria would be, well, there's a bunch of criteria. There's, there's the value one, right? So it has to be a good value for what the tea is. Uh, like, for example, if this tea was really cheap, then for sure it'd be on the site. This tea is a great tea. But if I remember correctly, it was a little expensive because it's certified organic, right? So it's not on the site. Um, but basically what the criteria is, the biggest one being when I, when I drink it, it has to be smooth and it has to, be, uh, it has to make me feel good. Uh, the second one would be it has to wow me in some way. Right? There has to be some characteristic in it that when it goes through my sense capacity, I'm like, I want to share this. I want to get this. Oh, I bet you this person would love this tea. Right? So that's, that's the, 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 the main one. Right? If I drink a tea and it doesn't wow me, uh, then I look at the value and maybe the value is there, but, uh, but it's not like a really wowing tea. So, so, so it's, it's a mix between all of those things, but the wowing one really is the, the, the most important thing, right? Because I stand by all these teas. If I'm putting the tea on the site, you know, my name is on there. I'm, I'm with it. I'm standing with the tea, right? Somebody says they don't like it. I don't go, well, you brewed it wrong. I'd be like, oh, here's your money back. Sorry. <laughs> my fault, right? It's my fault. Um, and and so that's that's the way uh, I look at it. Uh, have the monks ever tried to press this white tea into a cake? No, they have not. Right? What they've done is they've taken it and they've done this cake, which is for sale on the site, which is a Shen cake. And so this is on sale on the site right now. And this this cake, actually, this incarnation of it is very very similar to the Taiwanese Shen. And uh, I mentioned the Taiwanese Shen, and I've got to do a, a long sort of talk about the Taiwanese Shen and. And all of that. It looks like this spring there might not be any Taiwanese Shen um, for a bunch of different reasons. The tea mafia has been involved in a low production harvest and a lot of drama, and there might not be any Taiwanese Shen this year. But I'm still gathering information about that. But, anyways, this tea is is very similar to uh, the Taiwanese Shen, but not as strong, right? So it's a lower elevation, but it's very similar. They haven't done a white, they haven't pressed a white tea cake, and I'm going to ask them to. Right? So I'm going to ask them to, because I'd buy their, their production of it, especially if, if for some reason in the South, we can't do a, a fall pick this year. Um, anyways, that's, but that's another story. I'm still gathering information on that. And it's a sad story. I, it sucks. Um, it really sucks uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, but it sounds like what happened was uh, that T and uh, got a little famous and then uh, my friend, the producer there, he's 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 an artisan. He's not a tea mafia guy, right? So the tea mafia got involved. Um, anyways, I'm still gathering information on that, and obviously there'll be updates. Um, but uh, but yeah, hopefully we'll still be getting the fall pick, and uh, maybe the wintertime pick. But you know, it's the springtime teas, right? So the spring, everybody's after the springtime teas. Uh, but uh, but yes, to answer that question, the monks have. Never tried to press this white tea into a cake, but I'm going to ask them to. So we got about a minute left, and wow, look at the color of this tea. So this tea is like, it's, it's, it almost looks like a Chopur, like it's so strong. It's like the 11th steep of a Chopur right now. Uh, isn't that fascinating? Uh, they've been steeping there for about uh, five minutes or so. All right, I'll give a quick little thing. We got about, we got a minute left. It's still going, and now I prefer this. So this has got the sweetness. There's a touch of the floral coming back in. This one over here. Actually, they're pretty similar. Anyways, they're, they're basically the same there. They're great. Uh, also, is there a chance of getting a sample of this white tea in my order? I mean, in case my parcel hasn't been sealed. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> your parcel's right here. It hasn't been sealed yet, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, again, for sure. Uh, I gotta go. We got 10 seconds left. Thank you so much.
as always, for spending some time, taking time out of your day for watching this. Uh, this is going to be, I'm going to keep it. It's going to be on Facebook as long as that lasts, or sorry, on, on YouTube as long as it lasts. But uh, anyways, that cut out. Um, thanks for watching. Got any questions about this, let me know. Thank you very much for spending your time watching it all the way through. And see you next time.